Well, good morning all. Welcome to our devotion this morning. We are busy looking at the fruit of the Spirit, fruit that will last from Galatians chapter 5. Uh, we're looking at what it means to have life in the Spirit. And we have spoken of some of the marks of those who walk in the Spirit. And one of the marks is the fruit of the Spirit. And I want to just remind ourselves of the verses that we read uh, that uh, speak into the passage that we've been looking at on the fruit of the Spirit. So let's look at Galatians 5 verse 13. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature, rather serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in the single command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. And so I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They, they are in conflict with each other, so that you do, you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And then, of course, the whole list of the acts of the sinful nature. I'm not going to go through them. They are there in verse 19. And then it comes to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And so we said that we would be looking at the fruit of the Spirit in reverse order. Uh, we've been looking at self-control, and today we move on to the next, which is uh, gentleness. And, the, you know, the, there was a cartoon uh, in a Russian magazine that tried to make fun of the beatitude in Mark, uh, in fact, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, where Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount said, Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. And they showed a man dangling from a hangman's noose above a grave. And the caption read, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Six feet under. The concept of meekness or gentleness, if we're really honest, is not one that is you know, readily promoted in our society. We are rather told to you know, look after number one, to be self-assertive, to win at all costs, to you know, show your metal to make a stand and, and such uh, phrases. Gentleness is usually associated with weakness. Meek or gentle people are generally those who we assume to be quiet and softly spoken, uh, almost unsure of themselves. Those that we can readily take advantage of to do our dirty work, to treat as doormats or use as scapegoats when we're in trouble. And we might uh, have been more convinced of Jesus' words had he said, Blessed are the bold and assertive, for they will get what they desire. And that would be the mantra of the world today, but it's certainly not the word to Jesus. And so we get a look at this word gentleness. Uh, what is this gentleness that Paul speaks of as a fruit of the Spirit, that Jesus speaks about in the greatest sermon ever preached? Uh, in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, when he speaks about meek. Now the word translated meek or gentle in our translations comes from a, a Greek word, uh, <clears throat> prohotes. Prohotes. Now prohotes, Aristotle described this word as the center between two extremes. For Aristotle, gentleness meant Finding the proper balance in life. And that's a fascinating insight. Uh, a balance in life. That he saw gentleness as someone who had a balance in their life. Gentleness or meekness maintains a good equilibrium. It is to have a, a steadiness and stability that will not waver or be moved to extremes. When the Greeks developed a word, they not only gave it a careful definition... But they always try to illustrate it. Gentleness, prohetes, uh, or, or meekness, was most commonly illustrated by an animal that had been tamed. 
the wild spirit and nature of that animal uh, being brought under the control of its owner. And so a, a tamed wild horse, for example, does not obey or yield to the rider simply because it's weak. Not at all. It still remains strong. But rather it's a yielding or a submission of its strength into the hands of the rider. The strength of the animal is harnessed and focused for a particular purpose. Another example of this is how the power of water can be channeled and brought under control to drive large turbines and a dam wall which produce electricity for an entire city. We know too how the force of water when not harnessed can cause incredible destruction through flooded rivers, masses, tsunamis and so on. You cannot forget the tsunami in 2004 in Indonesia and Sumatra where 150,000 people lost their lives and again in 2018. And so water has this incredible power but when it's harnessed it can be used for some really particular need and in this case it can be used to generate electricity. And so gentleness in the same way as the Greeks described it is power or strength under control. It's submission of our strength and our, our will to God's control and purpose. Gentleness or meekness is not weakness, but strength under control. Most scholars agree that Jesus' beatitude in Matthew 5 verse 5 is really a quote from uh, Psalm 37. And so let's just read the first 11 or so verses of Psalm 37 and see what Jesus was referring to. So the psalmist, who is David, says, Do not fret because of evil men, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they soon wither, like green plants they soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your hearts. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil, for evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more, though they look for, for them. They will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. Just so far. Now we, we looked at the psalm in quite a lot of depth some while ago. And so therefore there will be some overlap between looking at the fruit of gentleness and what David says in this particular psalm. But verse 11 is the verse that we are highlighting. The meek shall possess the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. In both Matthew 5 verse 5 and Psalm 37 verse 11, the Greek and Hebrew words are translated the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. And so if we can understand what meekness refers to in the psalm, we'll have a good idea what Jesus meant and what Paul meant in terms of the fruit of the spirit of gentleness. Notice the parallel between verse 9 and verse 11. So verse 11 says, The meek shall possess the land. Verse 9 says, Those who wait for the Lord shall possess the land. And so the meek, therefore, are those who, who wait on the Lord. But what does it mean to wait for the Lord? We get a picture of those who wait for the Lord in the, in the, the middle section from verses 5 to verse 8. And we're going to run through these and highlight some of the, the, the ways that, that the meek can inherit the land. In other words, if we sketch a portrait of the meek, 
from these verses. The first thing we see is that they trust in God. We read in verse 5, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will do this. And so those who are meek are those who trust in the Lord. Those who have the fruit of gentleness are those who, who do not rely on their own strength, but rather rely on God's strength. They don't trust in themselves. They trust God for everything in their lives. Biblical meekness or gentleness is rooted in that deep confidence that, that God is for us, that He's not against us. And so that's the first uh, character trait of those who, who are meek or gentle. Then secondly, they commit their way to the Lord, also in verse 5. The, the Hebrew word for commit here literally means to roll. Meek people have discovered that God is faithful, that God is trustworthy. And so they can roll their burdens, as it were, their, their problems, their relationships, their, their health, their fears, their frustrations. They can roll all of that onto the Lord. They admit that they are insufficient and in adequate, incapable of coping with the complexities and the pressures and obstacles of this life. And so they trust God and they trust that He is able, that He is willing to sustain and guide them and protect them through all the dangers of life. And so those are the first two characters or characteristics that we have of those who display the fruit of gentleness. They trust in the Lord and they commit their way to the Lord. And so as we just think about that, and as we again just think of the analogy of, of, of a horse being tamed, and wild, an animal being tamed, or, or wild water being harnessed for, for a, a perfect use, uh, let's, be, let's remember what it means to, to be gentle, what it means to be meek, is to, to literally have the Lord be in control of our lives, to submit ourselves into His hands, that whatever strengths we may have, whatever talents, whatever giftings, whatever abilities we may have, we place it in God's hands, and, and that is harnessed for His glory and for our good, and indeed the good of those around us. And so on that note, let's bow in a moment of prayer. Next time we will look at further attributes of a person who who has the fruit of gentleness. Lord, we just thank you for, again, for these reminders of what it is to, to live in the Spirit, what it is to live a life that is filled and guided by your Spirit. And we know that one of the, the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. And we live in a world where everything tells us to assert ourselves, to, to dominate others and to to be number one. And yet these verses remind us that, that there's only one number one, and it is you. And we want to put our trust in you. We want to commit all our ways to you. And to know, Lord God, that as we do that, <clears throat> we will be able to harness whatever strengths, whatever weaknesses even, for your, for your glory and for our good. And so bless us as we continue to look at these verses. Bless us this day as we give ourselves to you now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.